Maximize your wealth now. Yes, in business, finance, family, and lifestyle. Think about it. As a certified financial educator, my whole goal for this program originally was to bring business and finance together with spiritual principles and universal laws. And all of it needs to come from the heart. Got it? Maximize your wealth now. Absolutely. Yes. Welcome back to Maximize Your Wealth Now in business, finance, family, and lifestyle. This is going to be a show of all shows because I'm bringing you Pat Butler. Pat Butler is a land tycoon in San Felipe, Mexico. And for those of you who don't know where San Felipe is, it's about four hours south of San Diego on the Sea of Cortez. And in San Felipe, you can actually own the land in Mexico. And every lot has an ocean view. So I can't wait to have Pat on the set so he can tell you what's coming up in San Felipe. Shirlene Reeves is an international speaker, certified financial educator, executive producer of WMAX TV, and a massive visibility media instructor, blending business, finance, and universal principles. She strengthens your business and expands your vision through massive visibility so you can make a six or seven figure income while you sleep. Shirlene has a varied and balanced background with education and experience in both financial and spiritual principles. On the financial side, she is one of only 253 certified financial educators in the nation with more than 27 years of experience. She was the CEO of her own nationwide company for over 17 years, which she bootstrapped from zero to millions and has invested in real estate for more than 20 years. She has a BA in sociology with a minor in psychology and a BA and master's degree from the University of Metaphysics. On Maui, she trained with best-selling author and speaker, Dr. Wayne Dyer, an American spiritual teacher and former Harvard professor, Ram Das. Shirlene Reeves brings real world training to the masses by sharing time tested experiential business and financial concepts. Our four cornerstones for successful investing are growth, safety, tax advantage, and protection. So one of the questions that I ask people is, where do people put their money? Where do you put your money? And they might say the bank. And when we're talking about a bank, we're probably talking about a CD or maybe just a savings account. But my question is, is there growth in the bank? Well, right now we can't say there's a whole lot of growth in the bank, right? I mean, it might be less than 1%. So no, there's not a whole lot of growth. Or maybe we can just say a teeny tiny bit and then the next thing is, is it safe in the bank? Well, yeah, they, it's FDIC protected, so we will say it's safe in the bank. But is there any tax advantage at all? No, there's no tax advantage. And also there's no protection for you or your family. So the bank is not a great place for you to leave your money sitting because every month it's losing money based on inflation. Now, where else might you think of putting money? Hey, okay, let's talk about a 401k. Is there growth in a 401k? Yes and no, because we've lost a great amount of money at different periods, 2007, 2008 being a huge loss, huge loss. So that would mean there really isn't any safety either. And then, what about our tax advantage? The tax advantage is small at the beginning of a 401k and it's deferred. So we have to say yes, it does have a tax advantage because yes, it is deferred, but does it have any protection for you or your family? And I'm talking about life insurance, long-term care, health insurance, car insurance, anything that protects your cash flow. So no, there's no protection. And we've got three no's here, so maybe the 401k isn't the greatest investment. So some people say the next thing might be real estate. 
Well, let's talk about real estate. Do we have growth in real estate? It really, really depends on where you live. Um, people are, it's different in different areas. If you're in California, they're going to say, oh yeah, there's growth. But we never really know for sure because we lost a lot of money in 2007, 2008 also. So I'm going to put yes and no because it really depends on where your real estate is. Is it safe? No, it's not safe because we don't know what the market's going to do. We don't know if it's going to go up and down and it doesn't always come back in everybody's areas. Does it have tax advantage? Yes, it does have tax advantage. It has a small amount if it's your personal residence and a bigger amount if it's a rental, which is why so many people buy rentals so that they can have that tax advantage. So we're going to say yes. But is there any protection for you or your family other than maybe a roof over your head? I would have to say no. There's no health insurance, life insurance, long-term care, disability, anything of insurance type product like that that can, that can protect your cash flow or your family. So we'll say no. So maybe real estate isn't the best either. And then some people say to me, well, what if I just stick it under my mattress? Well, let's try that. We'll put it under the mattress. Okay. So is there growth under the mattress? Maybe mold. That's about it. So we'll have to say no growth. Is there safety? Well, not really. What if you have a fire in the house? Would it be safe then? No, of course it wouldn't. Is there tax advantage to it sitting under the mattress or in your safe at home? No, there's no tax advantage and there's no protection for your family, so that's out. So you're saying, well, where am I supposed to put my money? I don't know. I thought those were all the places that I would put my money. To learn more about the four cornerstones for financial freedom, call the National Financial Literacy Center and attend a complimentary financial course in your local area. Call 877-325-4994 for more information. Curious to know, Lori, what was your biggest aha during the class? Figuring out how to say what I do in four to five words. This has been so exciting because now when I network and someone asks me what I do, I can say it so succinctly and very excited to the point that women say, I want to work with you. Oh, wow. Talk about change. You know, I'm a change agent here. And I tell you, I was resistant. And I did move forward and I did risk only because Charlene was so gentle and supportive for that process. I am so excited to be able to reach so many women now, whereas before it was one on one. And now I can reach the masses. The masses. Massive visibility for massive income, right? Yes. founder and CEO of Club Acquisition Company and a land tycoon developer in Mexico, purchased the acquisition of El Dorado Ranch, a 200,000 acre retirement vacation property in San Felipe, Baja, California, Mexico. In December 2002, his company privatized 35,000 of the 200,000 acres to allow foreign land ownership through a trust in Mexico called a Fedecomiso. El Dorado Ranch is the largest Fedecomiso in Baja with approximately 9,000 foreign land owners. In 2002, Mr. Butler was a regional finalist in the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year and was honored the 2006 Executive of the Year by the Sales and Marketing Executives of Mexicali. Four years later, the Baja California Secretary of Tourism and the President of the Tourism Developers Association awarded Mr. Butler 2006 Baja Developer of the Year. El Dorado Ranch is known for its beautiful 18-hole championship golf course and received the 2008 Tourist 
Optimistic Development Award of Excellence by the Association of Executives for Sales and Marketing. Today, it's virtually impossible to purchase Ocean View property in the United States. In Mexico, Pat Butler has made it possible for all of us to own property with a view of the Sea of Cortez. We are very honored to have Pat Butler here with us because you heard how noted he is and what he's done just in his bio. So Pat, welcome to our set. We are so happy you traveled from Mexico to see us. Well, thank you, Shirlene, Barbara. Good to be here with you. And we're really excited to hear about San Felipe. And as I told you all earlier, San Felipe is about two and a half hours south of the Mexicali border. That's where I like to go over. And it's only four and a half hours from San Diego, which is really wonderful because I get to go and spend time on the beach in this beautiful secluded little fishing town. And that is where Pat's from, right? That's correct. Since 1994. Since 94. So tell us how you got started in San Felipe. I was a, a international development VP for Marriott Corporation before uh, I got out on my own. I had five children and I was traveling for the last four years with Marriott all over the world and not spending a lot of time at home. And so when my oldest son got to the age of 12, I decided that I needed to think about making some career changes and I had an opportunity to stay with Marriott but I decided that I would do something else and so I wound up being the president of a company called Coast to Coast Resorts which was owned by a Fortune 500 company. In total I was there for about 11 years but after about the fifth year the Fortune 500 company decided to do a leverage buyout and sell itself off of the New York Stock Exchange. And so then I was looking for something else to do and the opportunity to take a look at El Dorado came up in 1993 <clears throat> and I was able to get a contract and perform on the contract. I closed on buying El Dorado in May of 1994, obviously 22 years ago. You had to buy that from a lot of families, didn't you? In Mexico, about 50% of the land is owned by indigenous groups called ajitos. Mm -hmm and they're kind of like Native American Indian groups. And this is the second largest tejito in the country. In the fall of 1994, under President Salinas, he was able to pass a law through Congress to encourage the ajitos to be able to do what they call privatization and get some of this land in these holdings into more of the public domain because mm -hmm. under the Ejido law, they pay no taxes, which is the agrarian reform law. The use of the land was really allowed for raising livestock and farming, mm -hmm. and it didn't allow for commercialization or other uses. We were one of the Ejido groups in the country that the government came to and suggested to the Ejido because it was so large that they considered doing privatization and what I originally bought was 25 years left on a 30-year land lease for 68,000 acres of land. Most of it in the northern zone, seven miles north of San Felipe, mm -hmm. which they decided to set that land aside to create what they called a touristic zone. And that's how El Dorado originally started. The company that originally started this in partnership with the Ejido was a company out of San Diego here called National Pen Corporation mm. that started in 1989 and I bought it from them in 1994. I, I love this story about the golf course because <laughs> he has a patented golf course. The two things that attracted all the foreign investment in Cabo was sports fishing and golf mm -hmm. and for the most part. So I decided to try and build a golf course. We only had a small sliver of beach, which was referred to as a beach and tennis club. Mm -hmm. We have now 544 acres that the golf course sits on, on the beach, and uh, 300 condominiums and 750 home lots. The big concern with building the golf course was the su water supply. Mm -hmm. In order to not deplete fresh water supply, I was looking for a grass that would take other than just potable water. I found some grasses back in the early 2000s. 
that were called past palum grass from the halophyte family and the grass can take uh, high salinity water. So we were able to build wells in the desert. Our grass called Seed Dwarf. I was able to obtain the patent rights for the grass. So we actually have a sod farm. And so we sell uh, our brand of the Seed Dwarf Paspalum to other golf courses, mainly for the same reason, to encourage not depleting fresh water supply. Mm -hmm. You know, as we all know, fresh water is gonna become a Hard to bigger and bigger thing in the future mm -hmm. as it already very much is out here in the west and of course it is also in in the Baja region so it was a good alternative and it gave us the opportunity to create the golf course if I had used fresh water supply with grass that required fresh water the expense would be close to a million a year mm -hmm. just for water wow. <laughs> and wow. I mean a golf course a championship golf course will take up to a million gallons a day it's an 18-hole championship golf course designed by a fellow by the name of Brad Benz out of San Jose. Brad's idea of doing a golf course is basically finding something that he calls God's footprint. Oh, no. <laughs> oh I like so that. So he walked the land with me a couple of times, and then on his own he walked the land, and so he built it in a very natural state and so we only moved I think about 250 to max of 300,000 cubic yards of dirt. Mm. Wow. Actually this weekend I'll have Esteban Toledo who is on the senior tour coming to play golf with me on Friday. Ah, and wonderful. I have a, and around the golf course it's called Las Caras de Mexico uh -huh. because it's the faces of Mexico and on all 18 holes I have uh, bronze style statues they kind of tell the history of from Montezuma uh, until uh, Pancho Villa in the first nine holes. And then on the second nine holes, it's all more people in the arts and so on and so forth. And then the last, the 17th hole, I have a famous golfer who was the first Mexican to hold a PGA golf card, Lee Trevino. Oh, oh, and Trevino. then okay. on the 18th hole, I have a statue, a twin statue with Esteban Toledo and Lorena Choa. And Lorena, of course, became very famous at one time. She was the number one ladies golf wow. player in the LPGA. Super. So Esteban's going to come down this week, and he's ranked in the top 10 in the seniors right now. Mm -hmm. But he's bringing a couple of his sponsors down to, so he can show the golf course a little bit and show a statue off. <laughs> Not too many golfers have statues on golf That's course. right. That's exactly right. Especially yeah. of him, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah, it was difficult to get these guys to let me have the rights to do the statues because they, they really, you know, had a hard time believing I was really going to do. And I had to get from the Historical Society in Mexico to do the first nine holes where there are some political, famous political figures uh, I had to sign a consent form that these would be authentic statues and they would be used right in their right purpose and we, you know without any concern of the, any kind of defamation or anything like that. Yeah. So, but it makes it a little bit interesting with the statues on it. It, take, it tells a quick history. Of, they're in Spanish and English. It tells kind of a quick history of Mexico some fun things to That's look at. That's awesome. So, so it mm -hmm. sounds like a really great resort to visit. Do you have a home where you wish had more peace, more serenity, was healthy for you, and that you actually had prosperity attracted to you? Most people have homes that have energies within them that prevent them from having these elements in their lives. If you participate in this four-part webinar on feng shui, the practical approaches, you can change the energy yourself very easily to create a home that is happy, healthy, and harmonious. <laughs> yeah. And that is, how many places, since you've been doing this for so long, how many places are still available if somebody wanted to move there? Well, through the years, we've sold like 9,000 home lots, um, and we have about 2,500 homes built. And I mentioned the south side of town where in Veravante the Spaniards are going to go, 
and I still own a big piece of land next to them. But on the north side of town, we have like 30, about 35,000 acres of land. Wow. And so we've only developed about 20 or 25 percent of the property. The property, because we've only built in areas which we refer to as above the 100 a year floodplain, we are only going to develop about 50% of all the land and we leave big buffer zones between subdivisions. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a bit of um, real estate left to develop, uh, probably another 25,000 home lots. Wow, wow. That's so eventually huge. El Dorado will be, you know, I mean, at it, it full build out, you know, it could be a, its own city. Mm -hmm more or less. Yeah, yeah. you're going to add a lot of, of the, you're going to add the medical facility, We right? started to do, we have a, I did a, a venture with a, a group that is called, referred to as Baja Medical, mm -hmm. is their incorporated name, and it's a, a couple of fellows that do medical clinics in Las Vegas, and, um, and it's well supported by our homeowner association because part of their annual maintenance fees uh, cover visitations to the clinic for them. I think they have a $10 copay or something, but it gives them, you know, they can get their blood pressure and they can get their blood work done a couple of times a year. There's certain amount of free benefits that go along with that. So, mm -hmm. and we have 24 seven on call doctor care. I mean, the doctor, uh, hours in the office I, is around 12 hours a day, but the other 12 hours we have somebody, one of the doctors on duty on call all the time. So that helps a little bit because one of the big concerns when a foreigner goes to a foreign country, especially since, you know, if they're not bilingual, uh, yeah, they wonder hard. what happens if mm -hmm. I get ill, you know, and so it gives them a level of comfort that we have a you know, a facility there that can stabilize and analyze what their needs are. Yeah. So, okay, so let's, I'm imagining myself moving. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Good. The, next, the next thing, right? The next thing that comes up, and I go, okay, well, what about groceries and food? And that can, how do I get those supplies in? Well, you know, we used to be um, very much like Europe, where, you know, you had your, Panderia, your bakery, and you had your carniceria, the car the meat shop, and the fish shop, and so on and so forth. So, but uh, we recent, well, I must say about four or five years ago, there's a supermarket chain owned by the Fembrays family called Calamax, mm -hmm. and uh, they contacted me, and uh, we actually helped them buy a piece of property we owned in town, and they built the, I think it was close to, it was their 100th store, I believe it was number wow. 100 or a little over 100. But they built a nice super full service supermarket there now. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, oh, it's beautiful. you know, it's really nice. And then uh, they told me this would happen. They said one of our competitors will follow us in. <laughs> and so right down the street, we had a mini Walmart, which is mm -hmm. called Bodega. And uh, so we have, a, we have the two stores there now. And we're just getting an auto zone. So oh, wow. We're, <laughs> we're getting some franchise branded product in mm -hmm. town. But like I say, it's not in any way overly commercialized. Yeah. You know, all the restaurants and, you know, my, my friends there that are in hotel and restaurant business. I mean, we don't have any big brand names. Uh, so. And there's like 10,000 people on the ranch, right, that are living there? I have about, uh, with the 2,500 homes and um, the condos and the houses on the golf course, I'm going to say in full season, there, there are more or less eight to 10,000 foreigners in all of San Felipe. Mm -hmm. On the ranch, I'm going to say our population's probably at peak about maybe about 4,000. 4,000? 4, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow, so, so but we community. we drive a lot of the economic impact for town. Absolutely. You know, my owners and between the taxes that are paid by them and the company and the and also the spending in town for the stores and the doctors and the dentists and everything. And the partying. And the partying. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I've heard we have that. the famous Owls Bar there. Oh, oh yeah. my god, Owls <laughs> Bar. My, my first ranch manager. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, wow. So he, he, went, he, he went into the bartending business, huh? Yeah, well, I wanted to uh, kind of take the ranch to another level and, of development and everything, and Al kind of explained to me, we're still very good friends, but he explained to me I came here more for kind of semi-retirement, and I'm not a corporate guy, and, you know, if you're telling me I can't wear my cutoffs and my sleeveless shirts, then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and said, make no, his tequila. No, I'd really rather have you in a <laughs> pair of jeans and a, you know, shirt with sleeves or short sleeves that says El Dorado or something. And he says, well, I don't think that's my style, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I made him a nice severance package and said, well, probably best for us to, you know. But he had other thoughts in mind, and so he got himself a bar downtown, and he's been there for years. So. He's probably mm -hmm. really happy doing that, too. He oh, yeah, can yeah, wear yeah. whatever he wants, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just yeah, yeah. serve up the drinks and yeah. no problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and he, awesome. he loves to give samples of his tequila that he makes. Yes. He loves <laughs> that. He makes his tequila. Yes, he wow. does, and it's pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> always wanted to own Ocean View property in the safety of a warm and wonderful community? Now you can dream big with a small investment. You'll love playing with your children in the shimmering sea of Cortez or retire in the quiet and warmth of sunny San Felipe and live comfortably on your social security. To learn more about El Dorado Ranch and all that it has to offer, call 800-404-2599 from the U.S. And from Mexico, call 686-200-4000. Mention WMAX TV to receive special additional incentive and developer financing with sea and mountain views starting at $5,000. I hope you all enjoyed that show. I know that you are really going to love Mexico. I've been going there since 97, and it is an awesome place to go because the people are so wonderful. So make a point to get down there and see what's available for you. Oh, that's so exciting. I love doing that, and I, I will be delighted to come and visit your condo down in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> so, and maybe we can get Linda Lenore there too and she can feng shui your condo. I am definitely <laughs> going to have her come and feng shui the condo. <laughs> so until right. next week everybody, we will see you then. <laughs>